Page 36, My Heart is Ever Faithful. In this piece, we deal with the thing known as a cross-hand accompaniment. You can view it as a lot of fun, or you can view it as absolute nightmare. It's up to you how you want to go. The point is, the accompaniment is crossing over. The left hand's doing the accompaniment on this case, and it's going to be crossing over the right and going back and forth. I mean, it looks silly when you go up fast, but it's the way it works. So let's just talk about it first. 4-4 four, four time, one flat, we're in the key of F major. Make sure you can do the F major scale, two octaves up and down, and while you're at it, do the D minor scale, two octaves up and down, because it's got one flat also. Take it one hand at a time, the right hand. Now the right hand gets the melody. You see the RH in the middle of the stance at the beginning? They're telling you to use your right hand. We're coming on beat four in the right hand, and the lower staff, third finger, here, to start. Look throughout the piece and you will see the dotted line connecting the melody notes together throughout the piece. That's this publisher's way of telling you that's where the melody is. And a, a lot of publishers will do that, but they usually only do it when the melody jumps from staff to staff. They'll use this line to tell you, oh, the melody went down here, or the melody went up there. They generally don't use it when the melody stays on the same staff. Here they're helping you out and pointing it out to you. Well, because the right hand is playing the melody, this tells you which notes the right hand is playing. So just play these notes. So you hear four, one, and two, and three. Now lift up, or lift up, reach up, fifth finger. And you just come up. We just change hand positions. finger before the eighth notes. And at the end of the line, the last note is a thumb, because now the melody went up to the top staff. And then this, they want fifth finger. It's up to you. The point is, the G is coming here, and you need to be able to reach it. Whether it's fifth finger or fourth finger or third finger or whatever, you need to be able to reach it. So in the second line, second measure, if you can reach it with third finger, then use third finger instead of fifth. Because then you can reach it here. If you can't, then use fourth finger. Here and then you. If that doesn't work, use fifth finger. It's just each finger gets a little further away from second and that makes it a little harder. You can scrunch up a little bit. I'll leave that up to you and your teacher. Third line is reach up and hit two, cross over, and then I go five, and then a three again. Because I got to do all that mess again. And hit two. Now, they want you to use the thumb. Can you do that? I mean, the thumb, if you relax it, the thumb can actually go quite a ways. So, uh, you can if you want. But another fingering you can use if you'd like to experiment a little bit. I don't know how big your hands are. Uh, the, from the F, the note right before that last measure, this is the third line down last measure, or the note right in front of it, the F. Instead of second finger, use third finger. Can you reach third finger? Because if you do that, then you can just do three, two, one, here. And then reach up second finger, fourth. So I can, I can stretch out quite a ways. I can walk my way up there and I don't have to, I don't have to cover all the notes at the same time. I'm just kind of relaxing here. And then here, I cover this one, and then I relax this immediately, and my hand comes up, and then I get this one, and relax again, my hand comes up, and then reach up with a little finger. So. That comes in handy in piano playing, be able to do this sort of thing, so you might experiment with it. So, using that fingering, it's three, it's third mate, and then go up. The last line, second measure, 
Do your hand, third finger. Uh, thumb, third finger. And I recommend reach down your second finger and thumb. So we don't have to cross over the thumb. That's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't like crossing over my thumb if I don't have to. That's a little tricky. And try and play this all legato if you can, all connected and with the fingers. I mean, we won't connect it when we're done, but try and do it with the fingers if you can. Then the left hand. Well, this is the fun part. It starts out with the F at the bottom. And then you see the LH. Well, that applies to that half notes. So you're going to use, and I don't care which fingers you use. You can use thumb. I find it easier for me. The thumb is a shorter finger. So if I can use four and two or three and two, even five and two. Sometimes it's just easier for me because the thumb is a short finger. So I'll leave that up to you and your teacher. So you're just crossing over. Then C, and you can use the little finger or the second finger, whichever finger is handy for you. Just use a finger. And then e, B flat. I do a 5 2, but you can do a 4 1 if you want. I don't like it. And then we're here. You can't connect these, don't worry about it. You're, it's more like a quarter note, quarter rest, because you need time to move. So it's. I, uh, 3 2 if you can, or 4 2 if you can't. And then a B flat. Try and use fourth finger if you can. So you can do the. GF, and then here, the last major second line is here, and then cross over to the, you can do a 3-5 here, I don't care how you finger these, just get them up there, whichever. Last line, you're here, and then here, 3-1 here if you can, and then you can do a 5 or a 4 or whichever. And then you cross over, and then down, and then the eighth note, or the quarter notes, excuse me, I do a 4-1, 5-2, because really, that's the chord, and we're covering it all in one hand position. Here. That's what I recommend. Then when you go to put the hands together, well, good luck with this. It's here. Just work it out where the hands, where do they play together? Here. And then the next one, you're here, and then you're here, Just work it out really, really slowly. And you go back and you gradually work out the hesitations. Just work on those spots because the beat needs to be steady at the beginning. One and two and. So you just gradually work it out so the beat is steady at any speed you choose. It slows you need to go, but make the beat steady and work out the hesitations. And once you have that, then we can think about the articulation. Well, there isn't really much of any articulation. But there's phrasing, and you can hear the phrasing in the right hand. You can hear the musical sentences. Right there. Again. Again. That could actually all be one sentence there. And then again, again, connect all this. So if you can listen to the musical sentences, lift up between them in the right hand. Just real quick, it's like taking a breath, but don't mess up the beat as you do it. playing it way, way super too fast, but I'm just giving you an idea of the sentences. In the left hand, you play them as legato as you can't, which you can't, but
But the point is, there's nothing real short and staccato -y here. It's a smooth piece. Then the dynamics, well, that applies to the melody here. It's moderately soft. And then you get to the second line, you're going to come up to moderately. Here, moderately loud. You go back down to soft. It's you're ending a phrase. You come down off a phrase. And you go back to moderately soft again. Then at the bottom, you do that again. You go up to moderately loud and come back down to soft. Well, that means the left hand, while it's jumping around all over everywhere, has to be very soft. Well, good luck with that. I'm, again, I'm going way too fast, but the, the idea is add the dynamics. Then the speed. Well, that, for me, that's hard because I got to slow. Largo is slow. Largo is really slow. Now there's slower's than this, but Largo is truly slow. It's. Uh, you have to imagine someone singing to this. There's words to this. It's, 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 Then we would like to smooth this out, because this isn't a keyboard piece, this is an arrangement. And so what they've done is they've done overlap pedaling throughout, and they pedaling and changing it quite a bit because we don't want to smear it up. So if I pedal it just the way they're showing, this is what it sounds like. I'm going to push the pedal down first and then the notes. And I'm going to push the pedal down with the pickup note. I want to connect these C's. And the only way to connect them is to use the pedal. So I'm going to push the pedal down here. Here. So that's what I read. Well, it's not complicated enough. Let's make it complicated more. I'm going to try and phrase it or pedal it along with the phrases. So when I'm at the end of a phrase, I'm going to lift the pedal up with the right hand so I hear that silence, that taking a breath. And I don't know about... In my mind, that goes by quick enough. I don't need to change it with every beat. I'm just going to change it every two beats there. So again. So here. I lift the pedal up with the hands. Here. See? And then I keep this hand down. And then as I play this, I push the pedal down. Then I can lift this hand up. I keep all the sound. It's going slow enough I can do that. So that... Again. And again at the end of the second line here. I lift the pedal up, there's a little silence. And then push it down. Off. 
something like that. That's my impression of it. You get a pattern of when do you look at the music, when do you look at the keyboard, and you're going back and forth looking at the music keyboard, and you'll you'll develop that pattern over time of. You learn to feel your way around the keyboard as much as you can, because the less you have to look at your hands, the better. But with this left hand moving around, you pretty much got to look down for that. So you'll figure it out slowly in time of when to look at the keyboard and when to look at the music. I'd like to play this with you slowly, it's slow anyway, to check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I will do the pedaling as I'm suggesting it though. So I'll give us three counts because we come in on beat four. One and ready and go and four and one and 